All right, hello, everybody. Uh, just to check, can everybody hear me all right? All right, so let's, uh, there we go. Awesome, okay. So uh, thanks for everybody that's here right now. Uh, really cool to see people actually show up to this. I didn't know if, <laughs> if anybody was gonna be here. So um, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, I guess what I'm gonna be doing right now is I'm gonna be, <sighs> answering questions that I've seen pop up in uh, some of my videos this past week. I've been finding it really tough to, to keep up with the comments, which is, it's not a bad problem to have. It means people are actually watching, which is fantastic. So I can't thank you guys enough. Um, I started off uh, just like, I think it was a week, a week and a half ago, I just passed 6,000 subscribers. And then just today I passed 7,000, which is insane. I never thought there'd be that many people uh, <laughs> watching me, but that's great. Uh, I'm super thankful. Uh, hey to people that are in the chat. Uh, Aunt Rodelli, Jack Crowley, uh, Wilfred, Richie Rich, there he is. Hey man, I see you in the comments all the time. Glad to have you here. Uh, yeah, ZZ Snipe, one week. One week to add a thousand subscribers, it's crazy. So, um, I'm going to be trying to watch, I've got dual screens here, so I'm trying to watch some of the comments as they're coming through. I'm going to check out uh, some comments from old videos. I'm just going to kind of just go with it. If if I don't answer a question, it might have just scrolled through. So throw it out there again if it's been a little while. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to start with some of the, the comments and questions on some of my videos first, and then I'll let you guys know when to throw some questions in there uh, once I've gone through a few of those. Okay, let's get into it. Um, oh, and by the way, feel free to throw out any type of question. It can be crypto related. It could be uh, to do with running a YouTube channel. It could be to do with uh, how I film things, um, even just questions about me, depending on how personal they get. Uh, but yeah, uh, feel free. If it's something I don't like, I won't answer it. So yeah, let's get going. Um, okay, so today I posted a video about uh, Gladia coin. Um, and so there's, uh, I'm gonna be just sorting through uh, some of the comments on that, but it might be from other videos as well. So uh, let's just take a look. So, okay, there's a question asking, is Gladia coin like eCoin and BitConnect? Uh, okay, so eCoin, I'll be honest, I don't know uh, a lot about it. Uh, I, I couldn't comment on that. BitConnect, I took a look at it just before jumping into this live stream. Um, and when I look at it, I've got to say, I don't know, it looks kind of scammy to me. Um, and it looks, it, it looks something along the lines of you lend the money and then they have a bot that trades it. And it's just the percentages that they're promising. It's that they're guaranteeing certain percentages, which in trading you can never do. Um, and, and the percentages are high, which means that their, their overhead, the, what, what they're actually making would have to be even higher than that. And then it leads to the question, if they're able to reliably make that much money, why would they then give it away? They wouldn't even have to if they're making those kind of margins. So um, again, I'd have to look into BitConnect a little bit more to get an honest opinion on it. But guys, if somebody's promising you free money, it's probably too good to be true. Like, yeah. I don't know. You got to look at it objectively. Um, maybe I'll, who knows, maybe it's going to be one of those things that's going to grow enough that I'll have to do an individual video on it. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Um, let's see. Oh, somebody had a question. Uh, Leo Wandersleb. <laughs> he commented on my video uh, earlier today. He said, thanks for the videos. Meta question. How do you get the good sound quality? Uh, answer is, um, actually I can show this right here. So I film my videos with, uh, it's a Canon Rebel. Uh, uh, it's a T5i. So it's got like the, the flip out screen. That's so I can see myself when I'm filming. 
when I'm filming, I attach a, just a little tripod as a, as a handle to hold on to. And for sound, what I did, I found that the sound just sucked filming with the regular camera. So uh, I looked online for cheap solutions. I found uh, a little microphone that attaches to it. It's a directional microphone like this. It just plugs into the side of the camera. Uh, it cost $40 Canadian on Amazon. Uh, well worth it. The sound quality on it is so much better now. Um, I think my next step, somebody keeps commenting that my videos are too shaky and I need, I can't remember what it's called, but it stabilizes the camera. So next step, I guess. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's, let's move on. Um, da, 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 da. Alex Thiessen said, I remember back in the day, Bitcoin was going for less than $200. Those were the days when Bitcoin was viewed as sketchy and associated with buying drugs on the internet. I was young and interested in buying it, but too fucking lazy to do so. Seeing a price of $3,600 Canadian, which is what it's actually right now, I think it just tapped $3,800 Canadian, insanity. Uh, I'm seriously kicking myself in the ass for the inaction. I still think it's early days, for the, so at the very least, I may still be jumping on the train late, but at least it hasn't left. Uh, Alex, I would agree with you. Obviously, I always advise caution. Never spend money on, on something like this that you can't afford to lose uh, because there's still a lot of uncertainty. Of course, the longer Bitcoin's around, uh, the more confident I am that it's going to continue to be around in the future. But yeah, don't don't put money into it that you can't afford to lose. Uh, but I, I would say that the risk reward on it is is definitely you know there's there's for the risk that you're taking the reward could be pretty great. Um, hey, bit guy, good to see you. It's me, boss lady. Hey, I saw you comment on one of my things. It's me, boss lady. Uh, glad to have you here. All right, I'm gonna keep going through. Um, I'm gonna keep going through uh, some of these comments on my older videos here. Da, 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 da. Somebody said Gladia Coin already sunk. Uh, they apparently did some sort of. Uh, I guess they did some sort of a fee or something uh, in order to continue getting your payouts. Yeah, it's just. It's, it's a Ponzi scheme. If they were guaranteeing certain returns, it wouldn't have mattered if people had kept on putting money in. If you're able to make, if you're able to double your money in 90 days guaranteed, it shouldn't matter if people aren't depositing. That was the reason because there weren't enough new deposits. Uh, red flag. Yeah, stay out of Gladia coin. Um, another question about BitConnect. I already went over that. Um, okay. Are you on Steemit? I am, I'm not an active user. Honestly, I haven't taken the time to learn enough of the platform. Um, I don't hold Steam. Uh, if I was active on Steam and had any sort of a following, I would probably be converting that Steam right back into Bitcoin. I don't know, uh, maybe if somebody knows enough about Steam it, I might spend a bit more time on it. I like the idea that, that you get rewarded in crypto for what you're doing, um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Somebody fell for another one of these. Uh, this is referring to Gladio Coin. Somebody fell fell for another one of these sites called Altcoiner. Um, he said he made a return and it worked out okay, but he must have gotten out before the pyramid collapsed. Yes, avoid those, please. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. I'm just gonna go, maybe I'll go through a few more uh, video comments and then I'll hop over to the comments section here. Okay. Um, <laughs> James Bond, I always see you on the Bitcoin Meisters comment section, just riling shit up. Ben, invest 10K in Gladia coin, wait 90 days to see what happens. <laughs> Thanks for the advice, man. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Gladia coin, more like glad I, uh, took your coin. Thanks, Matt Monroe. Fantastic pun. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, bacon, bacon asked on one of my videos, 
Question regarding Bitcoin ATMs in Canada, like the one you showed us on camera. So I did a, uh, I've done a couple of videos on Bitcoin ATMs. So um, do you know whether we can deposit money uh, using a different currency like US dollars or British pounds? Uh, no, not that I've ever seen anywhere in Canada. Uh, I'm very lucky there are a ton of Bitcoin ATMs in my city. Um, like 16, somewhere between 16 and 20 now, I think. It's pretty crazy. Uh, my city has like 1.2 million people. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a lot of ATMs that you can pop around. I think per capita, it's, it's one of the highest. Um, Vancouver has quite a few as well, like more than us, but um, yeah. Anyways, so no, uh, you can't deposit uh, different fiat currencies into them um, because with that, uh, a friend of mine, Dave, actually commented on this comment here. Uh, it's technically possible, but it's very unlikely that anyone will implement this soon as it would open up a whole extra legal can of worms for the company doing it. Um, and once it does work, the fees will likely be significantly higher than just exchanging the money at the bank and paying in Canadian dollars. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Um, ben, do you know any reliable exchange systems or websites that allow you to buy Bitcoin directly through PayPal and don't require any credit card and bank account information? Um, there are a couple, but you're gonna get hit with fees and you gotta be careful about uh, getting scammed. Uh, so the two that come to mind are localbitcoins.com and uh, Paxful, both of which have very large spreads above the the current Canadian dollar price, which is already uh, a little bit above the US dollar price. And I will get into the reason for that later. Um, but when it comes to uh, to local bitcoins and to Paxful, um, you're basically paying a premium uh, to get Bitcoin for th this anonymity. Uh, and you know, you're buying directly from somebody. All the people there know that right now it's a little tough to get your hands on, on decent amounts of Bitcoin. Um, Paxful is a site where you can pay through a variety of methods. So you can go buy a gift card and exchange that uh, for Bitcoin. Um, the, and, it's all done through reputation. So you have to kind of take a look at the person you're dealing with and, and make sure that they have a good reputation. Otherwise they just might run away with your gift cards or however you paid. Um, local Bitcoins, um, you can meet up with somebody in person and exchange, or you can uh, do it online. Again, you got to look at reputation and things like that to make sure you're dealing with somebody. And even still, there is that risk that they could run away with your money. So, um, I don't know of, of other ones uh, that accept PayPal at the moment, at least in Canada. Uh, maybe down in the comments below, somebody might like to comment and and, uh, and uh, let Bacon know if you know of something else. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Maybe I'm going to do maybe one other uh, for my videos, and then I'm going to to hop over to the live comments Let's see. Um, oh, this I wanted to cover. Okay. Spoonier Milk asked or said, Hi, Benny. Love the videos. I, I took your recommendation. I checked out Tone Vase. Uh, he claims Ripple and Ethereum are both scams. What are your thoughts about this? Could you make a video on that topic? Okay. So um, so I like, I, I really enjoy watching Tone Vase primarily for his technical analysis on Bitcoin. Um, and, and he's not the only person I watch, but I just, I like watching his videos. Um, but I don't agree with him when it comes to uh, altcoins and other implementations of blockchain technology. Uh, I think being complete a complete maximalist is just, is kind of having tunnel vision. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, I am, I'd say 95% of what I hold now is all Bitcoin and I've only dabbled in others here and there. Uh, so clearly I think that Bitcoin is the only one that shows a real use case currently, but that's not to say that I, some of these other platforms couldn't become major players. Um, with Ethereum, 
I, I don't hold it as a store of value because there's no cap on the number of coins that are going to be issued. So I, you know, it, I mean, obviously the price can go up, but in the long term, which is kind of my game plan, um, Ethereum, I'm sure will be worth more, maybe, but uh, there's, there's a lot to think of when it comes to Ethereum. So right now, all of these ICOs or initial coin offerings are being built on top of Ethereum. And a lot of these ICOs are, are just tokens that are paired with a company that may or may not use them. So that means that the value of the token itself is not even necessarily correlated with the value of the company. You're not buying shares in a company because that would be an illegal security. Um, you're buying a token that may or may not be used by the platform. So, okay, let's do two contrasting, uh, two contrasting um, versions of an ICO that I think may have value or may be totally useless. Okay, so one a great idea that I think is uh, game credits. Now, I, I haven't bought any, I have no plans to buy any, but I think the concept is promising and I think that the token itself if used could be valuable. So the idea behind game credits is, is essentially monetizing in-game assets. So let's say you're playing a game, you've been playing it for years, you get all these, um, you know, you get a, an awesome sword or something like that. When you're playing a game, you, you just have that item. You can't trade it with somebody or give it, to, you can't monetize that. And game credits is, is looking to monetize in-game assets uh, so that you could then trade or sell your items without having to go through a third party. It's, it's just a token representing that item. Um, and I think that's a great idea because it's a whole economy that, that isn't currently monetized other than through micropayments through a third party. So great idea. On the opposite side of that, uh, Kick Messenger is launching an ICO, which is why it's a free messenger. People enjoy sending free messages through it. So why introduce money into that platform? Um, you know, like, yeah, the, uh, for the company totally makes sense because then they get money to do whatever the hell they want with. And they, there's no obligation for them to even really use the token if it ends up not being useful. So that's an instance where you kick benefits if they, if I'm sure they'll get a ton of money from it, but if the token other than speculation doesn't end up being used for anything down the line, then it's useless. It doesn't matter if the valuation of kick the platform goes way through the roof. If the token is not used, it is not valuable. So it's not in any way correlated with the actual company. So yeah, you just got to kind of watch out for that. Um, okay. Let's hop over to the chat here. I'm sorry. It's been scrolling. I've been, been, Missing out. Okay, now I, I promised Bacon again. Uh, he threw a couple questions in here uh, before. Oh, wait, no, these are the ones I already answered. Okay, whatever. I'm going to skip ahead. Uh, Bacon, hopefully that was helpful to you. Okay, I'm now in the chat. I'm just taking a look. Uh, what do I see here? ZZ sniped. Don't forget my question, please. ZZ, can you uh, just copy and paste your question again? It's gotten lost above, and I don't know. I can't remember what it was. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of flustered right now. Uh, da, 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 da. crypto fish. <laughs> I like that you have the coin. West logo here. That's so awesome. Will you join our blockchain channel? Uh, sure. Hey, Ken. Hey man. Glad to see you here. Awesome. Uh, and do I know of crypto aquarium from crypto fish? <laughs> Very, very good question considering your username. Um, I don't know of Crypto Aquarium. I don't know what it is. Uh, I'll have to look into it. Maybe you can tell me about it. I, I don't know. Um, Ken, I saw that you got scammed. I'm so sorry. Uh, any of you that see Ken Bozak in the chat right now, really great guy, really nice. I interviewed him. Uh, a couple weeks back. I think he's going to be interviewing me. Great guy. He's been working with uh, the Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin podcast. Bitcoin. Yeah, he'll say it in there. Anyways, the Bitcoin podcast. Um, awesome. Hey, Digital Gold is in there too. I, I was on their show. Glad to see you here. Um, 
Yeah. So yeah, check both those guys out, Ken Bozak and Digital Gold. I've been chatting with them here and there. Um, they're a lot of fun. I really like them. Ken, I'm sorry to hear the scam. Uh, I, I think I saw something about it. I think you said you were taking down the video um, because you didn't want people uh, to to get screwed. Basically, what happened is is even even um, Coin Telegraph got scammed into to doing like a promotional video. Essentially, it was a wallet that um, was new, and it ended up. It looks like they were able to to then take everybody's private keys and and take their ether. So I think some people lost some money there, unfortunately. Um, I mean, it's it's a learning experience. It is still very much the Wild West. And um, I guess it's just another example of, you, I guess you, you kind of got to look at everything with a cynical eye because it's, it's, um, it's tough to know. And I mean, even some of these bigger companies, unless it's open source, you, you don't know really what you're, what you're getting, um, you know, as, as companies have been around for longer then then hopefully uh, they'll get better entrenched and you'll have better information. But yeah, sorry about that. Okay, ZZ Sniped has his question here. I saw you use Quadriga CX in one of your videos. From what I saw online, Kraken seems to have lower prices. Why does Quadriga have such a high price? Um, and could you could I do arbitrage between those two exchanges? Okay, so um, I think the main difference here is that uh, with Kraken, you actually have to wire them money. Uh, you can't just instant load your account. So Quadriga, when I use Quadriga, um, there's an option to, to use Interact Online. Um, so I can hit a button, it links to my bank account. I say I wanna put 500 bucks in it. Um, they charge a fee to do that. It's like 1% or 1.5%. Um, but if you're in a rush, if you're trying to time things, then then you might give that up. That's That might be just, you're willing to do it. Or if you're just impatient, sometimes it's just, I'm just impatient. I just wanna get my money. Um, so, yeah, Quadriga, they have a lot more funding options and uh, some of them are a lot quicker. Uh, so it's it's mostly convenience and the number of funding and and uh, withdraw options. Um, whereas Kraken, it's just straight up, you gotta wire money to them and it's gonna take the standard, uh, whatever it is, two to five business days, maybe longer um, to fund your account and then the same to withdraw. Um, so yeah, I think that might be uh, the difference of of price. Um, also, it has to do with liquidity, how much Bitcoin to to Canadian dollar trading there is. Uh, so there's a lot of factors. Also, if you notice, if you take a look at Quadriga CX and you convert their Canadian dollar price to American price, they are quite a bit higher than what the conversion to Canadian dollars should be. Um, so the reason for that is in Canada currently, uh, it it's tough to get your hands on coins. Um, all the Bitcoin ATMs are regularly getting sold out and they're having to restock them through the day. Sometimes it could be a couple days before they're restocked. Um, yeah, it's, people are buying them up like crazy and it's, it's just a little harder to get your hands on it. Also, like you have something like Coinbase where, where regular day-to-day -day people can buy but there's limits, right? Like you can only buy, what is it, 200, $250 a, a week at Coinbase, uh, to correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I mean, that that kind of stops them from running out, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, it, it's whereas in Canada, there's not really limits. Like the, the government has taken a very hands-off approach. They said they're not gonna regulate it yet. Um, because they want the technology to be able to grow, so, which is awesome. Um, somebody said 500 instant, so maybe, oh, Ken, uh, he says 5K a week in Coinbase. Maybe the 250 is just a starting limit. I Because th somebody else uh, that I saw the other day um, was, th somebody just said Bitcoin is 3,000 on coin market cap, US? Is that a thing right now? Jesus, hold on a sec. I'm distracted by the by the phrase Bitcoin. Hold on. I don't know where they're pulling their price from because Bitstamp is the highest one, and that one's at twenty-seven forty-five right now. 
I think we're going to hit all time highs like tonight. Uh, it looks like it. I, I mean, for sure a double top and usually those are broken. So yeah, crazy. What's Quadriga at? 38, $3,800 for a Bitcoin in Canada. That's insane. $3,800. Holy hell. Okay. All right then. Anyways, back to the show. Um, <laughs> okay. Da, 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 da. I missed a few things up here. I'm scrolling through really quick. Um, oh yeah. Somebody said, didn't, uh, didn't Quadriga lose a bunch of money recently? I haven't looked deep into that, but, uh, essentially from what I've heard, um, it's, it's partly a result of, of the hard fork that happened before, um, and something to do with, with, uh, I, I can't even, something to do with the API. Maybe it wasn't updated properly. I, I don't even know, but, um, yeah, uh, they did lose a bunch of Ethereum and it had to do with, there was a change with the code or, or they needed to make changes after Ethereum uh, split and and maybe they didn't know. And I don't know if other exchanges are susceptible to this, but anyways, yeah, there's like a few, few million worth of Ethereum that went missing. Super unfortunate. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like the price of Ethereum budged. Whew, okay. <laughs> Bacon asked me how many bitcoins I have. I am not going to disclose that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to answer that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell everybody when I first got into, when I first got into Bitcoin. So I started looking at it uh, I was curious about it through 2013, but didn't touch it. I kept on seeing it and thinking, oh, now it's X amount of dollars. I missed the boat. And I did that the entire year, all the way up to, to the, the all time high. I didn't really, really start thinking and, and learning about it until early 2014. Um, and I, I checked out, there was a, a video series called How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Crypto. Uh, it's amazing, uh, especially for the time there was nothing else. Andreas, I think, was just barely even starting to do his rounds at that point. Um, yeah, so so that resource was incredible. A bunch of 30, 45 minute videos explaining how Bitcoin works, um, what could possibly go wrong, what to watch for. Um, but it was amazing. So I watched through like 12 hours worth of material, maybe more. And after that, I felt pretty well informed and then and then I went to other mediums and I started checking out I actually started buying uh just before Mount Gox right before Mount Gox crash I bought a little bit and then Mount Gox crashed and I had all the my friends uh posting on my wall because they knew I was getting into it and they're like oh I hope you didn't buy any of this shit I kept buying. I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. Whatever. Um, I, and the reason being is I was able to look at Mt. Gox and and differentiate, knowing that this is a company with terrible business practices versus the cryptocurrency itself is still sound and hasn't stopped working. Um, so yeah, I just kept buying. I watched any money that I put into it at that time, which I think it was eight. It was like the the price of Bitcoin around that time was around 800 US dollars. And then it started going down from there. I followed it all the way down to 200. I don't know. Nothing. I, I would look at it every day and I had my set amount that, okay, every couple of weeks, I'm going to put this much money in regardless of what the price is. And, um, you know, it got down to $200 and everybody's like, dude, it's, it's crashing. But I was able to look and say, okay, well, I believed in it because of these fundamentals. Have these fundamentals changed? If not, then keep going. So that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of what what I enjoyed doing, and 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 I believed in it, so I kept going. Um, I think the cheapest Bitcoin I ever bought was three hundred Canadian dollars, and that same Bitcoin is worth thirty eight hundred. So great. Um, hey, twenty one million club, good to see you here. I also did 20 million clubs show a while back. See him in the chat, check him out. Um, really nice guy. 
yeah, super glad to have you here. Man, there's, I have 108 viewers. <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome, cool, let's, let's do some more questions. Shout out from Winnipeg, Alex Thiessen, good to see ya. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, David Parker, question, what would you recommend doing with Bitcoin if a hard fork happens? Uh, so I'm going to just sit there and wait. Um, I am lucky in the fact that uh, I don't have to be spending my Bitcoin. Um, so if anybody currently watching doesn't know, in the event of a hard fork, if it, essentially Bitcoin would, that means two groups of people want two different things out of Bitcoin. And if they can't agree and they start running software that is not compatible, then essentially Bitcoin splits into two different cryptocurrencies. Um, this in itself is fine, but the argument is over which one gets to be called Bitcoin. Um, that is really the only argument because right now anybody could take Bitcoin's code, make a change to it, boot up a new cryptocurrency and call it whatever the hell they want. The argument is over the name. That is it. Um, so other than that, it's just consensus of people who are running the code. So, so if there's a split, then you just go with the currency that you believe in. Um, but if it splits, what happens is you end up having the same amount of Bitcoin on both both uh, blockchains, both versions of Bitcoin, you have the same amount. Um, so given that, you could just sit it out and, and do nothing and um, see which one is the dominant chain. Uh, if, if you really have, um, if you have strong beliefs one way or the other and you really wanna support a certain chain, at that point, what you could do is you could sell off your Bitcoin on the chain you don't believe on. Blah, blah, blah. You could sell off the Bitcoins on the chain that you don't believe in, and then you could use that to buy Bitcoin on the chain that you do believe in. Um, when people ask what I'm gonna do, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to wait, and I'm probably not going to sell any of them. Why? Look at Ethereum. Um, if you had freaked out and sold either one of them, to tell you the truth, uh, then then at the time of the split, I think Ethereum was twenty something dollars, and when it split, it got uh, the price of Ethereum got cut in half uh, to about twelve or something like that. I could be wrong with my numbers here, something like that. Um, anyways, and then you had Ethereum Classic that started sneaking up, and it was like three, three or four dollars, something like that. So it's starting to be about twenty five percent of the the price of uh, the main chain of Ethereum. And people were getting worried because they were wondering which one is going to be the dominant one. Some people freaked out and sold. Some people sold one and kept the other. Had you just sat there, and waited um, and held on to your $12 Ethereum. It's like 200 and something dollars today. Had you held on to your $2 Ethereum Classic, what is it today? It's, it is, Ethereum Classic is like $17. So, I mean, I think I would just hold on to both versions of Bitcoin. If one was clearly not being used and the chain was you weren't able to do anything with it um because of slow block times then yeah i'd probably get maybe get rid of it but even still maybe i'd just leave it there um you never know maybe maybe there ends up being a use case for this other bitcoin i don't know i'm i'm pretty open-minded i know what i prefer uh but yeah i think i would just keep both all right, uh, feel free to throw in more questions here. I'm looking again. What's going on? Um, da, da, da. Some people talking about Gollum. <laughs> I don't know much about it. Uh, <laughs> crypto fish, does this noob know how to hodl? Sure does. Um, <laughs> okay. Thanks, David. I'm glad I could answer your question. Yeah, if anybody... Okay, there's a question. Thanks for uh, caps locking that, Gabriel. Uh, that helps me see it. What do you think about the current issues with the Bitcoin network? Fees extremely high, transaction with low fees never get confirmed. It's a pain in the ass, honestly. Um, 
so when I do my videos, uh, often I'm, I'm uh, doing examples of sending money to and from wallets, stuff like that. I honestly, I, I, um, I can't do as much anymore. I can't, like, if I'm transferring money a bunch of times and I'm hitting a high fee time of the day, I might drop like $15, $20 or more just sending some money around. Uh, I can't do that. So a lot of the times I'll, I'll go right to the sending screen and then I'll say, and if you wanted to send, you would just hit send right now and I won't finish the transaction, which is unfortunate. Um, but that's, that's kind of the way it is. Do I see it always being like that? No, not necessarily. I think, I think scaling is going to be, uh, it's going to be solved. The problem with decentralized systems that don't really have governance is that a problem needs to get to to catastrophic proportions before everybody really can pull together and fix it, right? When it's kind of a problem in the background, people can sit around and argue about it. When it becomes a real problem like it is right now, um, then people are going to figure it out. Um, right now, there's the countdown to August 1st for BIP 148. There's the Barry Silbert agreement, the New York agreement that's being, that's already kind of come together. Um, so yeah, something's going to give. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but uh, scaling is going to happen. It's just a matter of how. And at this point, it looks like whether it's the the New York agreement or BIP 148 or some mishmash of whatever happens, everybody now, other than people that are still super rah-rah BU, um, everybody right now is is very much saying, seg what's gonna happen, it's just how are we gonna implement it? Um, which, great, that's fantastic. It's It's, things are kind of leaning towards consensus in that sense. Um, but we've got a couple months. It's it's going to be a rocky ride on the way there. Uh, Steve Wilson, I am from Calgary, bro. Giddy up yourself. <laughs> All right, James Bond, what do you say? <laughs> BTC Sessions, how do you keep your hair like that and how long do you take in the morning to get ready? I'm going to be honest. I woke up like this. Uh, but that's because I put so much goddamn product in my hair yesterday. So you could say I'm naturally pretty <laughs> or naturally hideous, whatever you think. Um, <laughs> yes, this is the work of a blow dryer and then sleep. Okay, let's see. Question with sunshine around it. Hey, Sam Shumway. Based on faster processing times than BTC, what other cryptocurrency is most likely to replace BTC at point of sale uh, in the future, if a replacement were to happen? Um, that's a good question. Huh. I mean, it depends. Uh, Litecoin? Litecoin, I, I have a bias towards Litecoin because it is Bitcoin just with SegWit <laughs> um, and a couple different changes. So instead of 21 million coins, there is going to be 84 million coins. Instead of 10 minute blocks, there's two and a half minute blocks. Um, those are really the only changes and the fact that they were able to get SegWit because they threatened a user activated uh, soft fork. Um, and the miners just kind of said, oh shit, and, and signaled. Uh, which is kind of my hope for wh what happens with Bitcoin. Um, but, ugh, God, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, it, it's hard for me to say what would replace it, but what would I like to replace it? Maybe Litecoin, because I think that it is essentially the same protocol, but now with SegWit already enacted on it, um, they're already testing out Lightning Network and everything. Yeah, sure, great. Um, and I like that there is a, a cryptocurrency economy just, just because it gives choice. It's, I know I, I love Bitcoin and it's the number one thing that, uh, that I'm focused on. But I love that if anything got to a point where somebody didn't want to use a specific currency, now they can just hop to whatever one they want and they can use different ones for different things if they want. Um, and I think that's a great thing. Um, 
I know that some of the coins in there are total shit, but um, the market will figure that out in time. I think right now it's just a lot of irrational exuberance. A lot of people that have never used cryptocurrency that are just tossing money at things because they see the price going up. So it'll figure that out. Uh, I'm sure at some point we'll see a, a, uh, like a tech bubble crash like we saw in 2000 with all the, oh, on the, what was it, on the NASDAQ? Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, okay, <laughs> James Bond, I will answer this question too. Are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm right-handed. Would you like to know my favorite color? Um, okay, CZ Sniped asked if I could talk about August 1st, BIP 148, prediction of price changes. A lot of people in the chat want to know. Um, yeah, I, I I think that there's a few different possibilities. One, a ton of people get on board with BIP 148 and Segwa gets activated and that's it. Two, a ton of people get on board with Barry Silbert's New York agreement and Segwa is activated and then a hard fork gets locked in. Three, there's a split down the middle. People can't decide. There's a chain split and we have two Bitcoins. Um, and then you have to wait and ride it out and figure out which one is the main Bitcoin. And people will panic sell if that's the case. And I will be just sitting there and maybe buying a little bit of both. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about that, I guess. Uh, Steve Wilson, do you use the Bit National ATM in Calgary? What do you think of their fees? Uh, full disclosure, I work with Bit National. They called me up a couple months ago. They asked me to, they asked me to help them out. Uh, they liked my videos. They saw some of the other projects um, that I've been doing. So, um, I. I I can give you some insight on, on the way things work. Uh, so currently with BitNational, uh, across the board, all of their ATMs charge 10%. That is recent. Um, it used to be that Alberta was 8% and Vancouver was 6% at the ATMs. The reason for the price hike uh, for them was because they outright just keep selling out. Um, it's insane how much money is is being pumped into uh, pumped into these machines, uh, and they're not even the most expensive. Um, there's another company out in Eastern Canada called Instacoin, and their machines are somewhere between 16 and 17 percent. It's absolutely insane, and people are paying it. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, it's just. It's literally they in order to not be killed by price fluctuations and things like that. They kind of have to keep their percentages up on the machines. Um, the machines are mostly for small transactions. Uh, anybody wanting to do larger transactions and buy large amounts of Bitcoin typically comes to the uh, office and gets uh, a much lower rate. Um, but yeah, um, they're 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 looking at, at, at fixing that and, and trying to, trying to alleviate these wait times when they run out of coins, they're figuring out solutions for that as we speak. And I can't really say too much beyond that. Um, is there a cheaper option in Calgary? Yeah. Come down to the office or, uh, sign up for Quadriga CX. Um, and that's only if you are okay with, uh, providing your information, uh, for Quadriga, like giving them ID and proof of address. Um, the, the other reason for higher fees when it comes to companies like BitNational or Bitcoin Brains is another one in Calgary and uh, uh, Bitcoin Solutions. There's, there's a few companies around that have ATMs in my city. Um, and the higher fees, basically you're, you're paying for the convenience and the anonymity because there are essentially, uh, there's nothing that you really have to provide um, other than just scan your address and put in cash. Um, Kenny Lamb, what will happen now? Total market cap reached a hundred billion. Did it? A hundred billion for the cryptocurrency market cap. Jesus. Um, what will happen now? I don't know. Probably keep going up. <laughs> 
That's crazy though. Hundred billion. The internet bubble was in the trillions. We might still have a ways to go. Um okay. It's me, boss lady. 116 in the live chat now. Thanks for uh thanks for encouraging people to like and share. Uh BTC reached an all-time high, Kenny's telling me. I gotta have I gotta have this live price in the background here. Holy shit, it did. Hey, all-time high. I'm so smiley now. Okay, $27.94 on Bitstamp. Jesus. <sighs> it doesn't even really compute anymore. Like, I don't know if anybody else thinks this, but like now I'll look at the price on my phone and my eyes just kind of glaze over and I'm and my brain doesn't really wrap around those numbers. It just kind of goes, oh, that's that's a high number, especially when you're at all time highs and then it keeps going because there's no reference point. Like up till now, I was kind of thinking like, oh, well, maybe we'll get past our previous high or whatever it was last week or so. Uh, now it's like, OK, well, I like there's no reference point of where it could go. Like, I don't I have no idea. Jesus. Thanks for keeping me informed. I'm going to keep this price chart up here. <laughs> Kenny, let's celebrate on my stream. I agree. Thank you. Um, sweet. Well, I'm glad I could have a live stream with a Bitcoin all-time high. Yay. Uh, 116, 18 viewers. Wow. Thank you, guys. I'm super stoked that everybody's here. Ooh, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, Kenny, I hope it does explode to 3,000 as well. Um, <laughs> oh, Alex Thiessen, do you have a real job? Uh, I do. I have two now because I am working with uh, Bitcoin Salute. Uh, sorry, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I am working with Bit National. Uh, I have done some work with uh, Bitcoin Solutions as well, um, and I've also I'm friends with the guy that uh, owns Bitcoin Brains. Um, so I. Between the three of them, I try to remain as Switzerland. I know that they're competing with each other. They all know that I've I've worked with each of them. Um, but yeah, you know, like I I feel like there's enough room for multiple for multiple companies to be in the space, even in the same city. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, whatever. I'm I can be friends with everybody. So, um, anyways, let's see here. Okay. Kenny, you should mod me to keep you up to date. How do I do that? Sure. Okay. There you go, man. <laughs> okay. Um, da, 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 da. What was I just answering? I just saw something. Oh, yeah. My real job from Alex Thiessen. Okay. So, <laughs> so my day job, it's gradually changing. But up until this year, my day job, I teach, <laughs> I teach little kids how to break dance. Um, so what I do is I, I work for a company called Sound Creations, Sound Creations with a K. And what I do is uh, essentially um, in phys ed or in gym, when the kids have the dance unit, instead of the, the old gym teacher breaking out his best polka and, and square dancing, um, I come in and I do like some break dancing and some popping and some locking and animation and, and kind of whatever style. Um, so yeah, typically what that looks like is I go into a school, I see, um, it could be classes anywhere from kindergarten to grade 12, though the majority of it is kindergarten to grade six, I would say. Um, and usually I'm there for a week. I teach every class and at the end of the week they have a big show um, and show off their awesome routines. Uh, now what I'm doing, <laughs> show us some moves. I don't think it's going to look very good. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on a second. I got to show, I, I'm going to do this because this was my friend's wedding. And uh, so, <laughs> God, you guys are going to see a whole new side of me. Okay, so recently my friend had a wedding in the UK. So I did a video while I was there about uh, spending with Wirex Bitcoin Visa card. Uh, anyways, while I was there, I was in his wedding and um, 
and we performed like as a, as a kind of like a gag, like a funny dance, and then like a flash mob to surprise his his now wife. Um, so, <laughs> and and it was pretty ridiculous. Uh, it was awesome though; I loved it. Um, and so yeah, I'm just gonna find this video here. Uh, where is it? Oh, I found it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, we did this, we did this surprise dance. We've done this a few times at different events. Um, <laughs> we call ourselves the Manzies <laughs> to give you an idea of how ridiculous it's going to be. Um, and let me just pause that. So, ugh. okay. Uh, we call ourselves the Manzies and we, we just do like the most ridiculous dance that we can come up with. And, um, and yeah, so that's what we did for this. I'm going to post it in the chat right now. You guys can watch it later, but, uh, enjoy it's a, it, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Anyways. Yeah. So my day job is teaching dance. Uh, but now I'm kind of becoming the manager for this company. So I'm essentially managing our 15 other instructors doing the contracts, sending them out to schools and then, uh, bit national, uh, because now I'm getting to work with Bitcoin, um, it's kind of becoming a bit of it's it's Bitcoin's becoming my passion, and I love it. So that's creeping in a bit more. Um, I think it's going to become more and more of my life as time goes on. Okay, Digibyte hitting point hitting. I don't know if you're yeah probably saying fifty cents by June eighth. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> um, I mean, okay. Uh, full disclosure. So I just started checking out uh, Poloniex a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, so what I did in my head. Uh, so I have strict rules for myself. Um, I had a magic number of Bitcoin that I always wanted to have. And once I hit that number, then I felt comfortable diversifying a little bit across other cryptocurrencies. And I'm not talking very much, a tiny bit. Um, so what I did is uh, some of my rules are, has to be something in the top 20. Uh, it has to have been around for... Hmm, I'm kind of still deciding my timeline. Bef initially, I said it has to be a, a, a token or coin that had been around for one year. Um, and it has, yeah, so I guess that's kind of my, my rule. Um, I'm not allowed to sell my Bitcoin holdings for other cryptos. I can only rely on future income to invest in this. Um, I check it every week for shifts. If something has been spending uh, most of the week outside of the top 20, then I will reallocate. Um, I allocate everything evenly across anything that I hold that is in the top 20. And there's a couple that I just, uh, that I just don't touch. Uh, the one, the Bitcoin one, I saw that there was some huge flaw with that, that allowed unlimited counterfeiting. I'm not holding any of that. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> James Bond. Ben, you are a dancer. Indeed, I am. <laughs> uh, Steve Wilson. Okay, let's see what else. Spoonier Milk. Thoughts on Ripple? I fucking hate Ripple, but I have some of it. Um, why do I hate Ripple? Well, I mean, I don't know. Uh, again, I don't, I don't own very much of it. Uh, why do I own it? Because it's in the top 10. And I honestly think that banks are probably going to continue to use it. And with that, the value may rise. But uh, fundamentally, I hate Ripple. I don't like it at all. It's just, it's, it's everything that I like in Bitcoin, everything that I like about Bitcoin and the reason I got into Bitcoin, it's, it's like Ripple is the antithesis of it. Um, again, and I'm not that well versed in Ripple, but it's just, it's, it's, it makes sense as a tool for banks to lower costs in their back end. And that's fine. They can go ahead and do that. 
Um, but yeah, I'm probably not. I don't know. I don't. I don't care about Ripple. If it were to fall out of the top twenty, I wouldn't blink an eye, and I would probably, actually, probably, if it fell out of the top ten, I would probably sell it. Uh, I. I don't know. I, I wouldn't blink an eye selling it either. It's it's just strictly a, a potential long play if it ends up being used for the back end of 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 the banking system. Um, <laughs> laugh all the way to the bank. Sure. Uh, okay. What else? Uh, I'm okay. I know there's a, a bunch of questions above, but you're gonna have to throw some more out here for me if you'd like me to answer them. Uh, if you can, like caps locks the shit out of it, or do some sort of like emoji mess around it, then then I'll be able to pick it out a little bit better. Um, what about Nem? I have some. I I don't know anything about it. This is <laughs> this is how how well informed I am with the cryptocurrency space outside of like Bitcoin and Ethereum Litecoin, maybe a little. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know a lot about, of, about it. I'm, I'm just banking on the fact that, that there's a lot of irrational exuberance and there's going to be a lot more. Um, yeah. <laughs> Read this shit says Tommy Bath. I did. <laughs> okay. What's the lowest Bitcoin I bought? I said that earlier, but uh, it was, 300 Canadian dollars. It was crazy. Like I could get a paycheck and be like, I'm going to buy a Bitcoin today. That would not happen now. Um, <laughs> LOL, you just own coins and don't know anything about them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the, the reason why it's not just me tossing money around being like, maybe it kind of is. But um, so I read a book recently uh, called it was the Tony Robbins one. Um, it's not Matt Money Master the Game. It's his newer one. Oh, what the hell was it? Maybe somebody else out there knows. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, Tony Robbins has a new book. It's fantastic, and it talks about index funds and how when people try and guess uh, which which stocks in the market are going to go up. 96% of the time, even the top hedge funds managers can't do it. Like they can't beat the market. Um, so it's safer to just allocate across across the entire market and then just join, enjoy the, the gradual rise in, in the entire market itself. So that's kind of my my tactic. Um, yes, unshakable. Thank you, the Alex Thiessen. Yes, that is it. Um, yeah, it's 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 just for me. It's strictly a, a a rationale of if I if I spread myself out across the cryptocurrency market, then some will go up and some will go down. Some will go way up and some will crash to the ground. But overall, if cryptocurrency is here to stay, then I will continue to follow the market and that's kind of the reason for my top 20 because i think there's a lot of shit out there right now um and i don't want to expose myself to too much of that um and i think stuff that's hitting the top 20 there's a bit of a reason for it and if it drops out of that then then i'll ditch it and yeah i might lose a bit of money that way but at least i'm i'm kind of i'm betting on the cream of the crop versus like betting on on the penny stocks of crypto down in like the 50s and 60s right um, yes, Sid McClure, I couldn't agree more. Strategy number one, cover all bases. Uh, ben, you should do a uh, an interview with Crypto Omar. You guys are awesome. AH, Crypto Omar, I haven't watched his stuff yet. I don't think so. Um, I could be wrong. Let's see. <laughs> Peter Murphy, do you know the dance company, Dance with Friends? I do. I taught there a little bit, actually, back in the day. Uh, yeah. They're up on Elbow Drive, yeah. Okay, Calgarian. Um, yeah, Tommy, I sure I'd love to check out Omar's channel and and maybe have a conversation with him. Um, I should definitely watch his stuff. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, let him know about me too. Let him know that I'd love to chat. Um, and just in case I forget. Um, yeah, it's me, boss lady. Yes, please put me in touch. That'd be fantastic. Thanks for suggesting it. Um, crypto bud thoughts on Ethereum classic versus Ethereum. Okay. Um, 
fundamentally, I agree with Ethereum Classic. Uh, I did actually. I did an interview uh, when I kind of back when I first started this channel. I was in Singapore and I met a guy named David Moskowitz, and he's uh, CEO of a company called Atoris, and they're working on smart contracts using, uh, well, at the time they were using Ethereum, and they still are. Uh, but the split had happened, and I asked him his position on that, and he, he kind of has the same position as me. He said fundamentally, I agree with Ethereum Classic. Um, I do not think that uh, they should have rolled that back. Um, they even said that in the DAO, code is law. Um, and we so soon found out that was not the case. Um, and I realized that it was a large portion of the entire currency. But, but now look at the precedent that's been set. Um, yeah, I... I uh, <laughs> It's, it's a tough call because I, a lot of people were out a lot of money, but at the same time, like if, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have your strong set of immutable rules, then what the hell's the point of a blockchain? Um, so yeah, I, uh, fundamentally I agree more with Ethereum classic. That being said, most people are still building on Ethereum. So I think that's the one that's going to be used the most. Now that could very much change down the road if there were to be a major issue where a company that is relying on, on immutability builds on top of Ethereum and something that they do is not to the liking of whoever and whatever they've done gets reversed or they get shut down or, or something along those lines. If that were to happen, then I think you might see an exodus of a th like Ethereum projects moving to Ethereum Classic, which I would love to see. Yes, big guy Bri, uh, yeah. He, um, Putin, good point. Uh, uh, Vitalik just met with Putin and convinced him uh, to get on board with Ethereum, which I think in the short term is gonna be great for Ethereum, but I think in the long term, the you're going to run into some conflicts of interest. So yeah, yes, Richie Rich, Vitalik can just delete your balances. I saw that quote too. And that shit's crazy. Um, yeah, I think there's going to be issues with that uh, in the future. Yikes. Um, okay. JB Frazier. What are your thoughts on putting your Bitcoins in places like Bitcoin's brain to grow and how long do these sites usually last? Don't do it, man. Um, I just did a video today on, on a Gladia coin. Same kind of idea. You put your money in and it sends you more money back later. Honestly, all of these, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Bitcoin itself is already risky and is already giving back incredible returns. You're trying, you're trying to make money on top of making money. And when people, I don't know, the promise of all this extra money clouds people's judgment. Um, stick, just, just hold it, man. I, honestly, you might get money back in the short term but if you keep doing it long term you're gonna lose money just, i would just hold it i would avoid it at all costs any of those sites i don't touch them with a 10-foot pole uh so be careful um dark coin simon broder i don't know anything about dark coin really to tell you the truth uh, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to take a look i yeah i don't know a lot sorry um, 21 million club. If root, if root stock ever happens, it's going to give Ethereum a run for its money. Yeah, totally. Um, maybe that is, maybe that's where people will go. If Ethereum becomes, <laughs> becomes a problem. Um, okay. So the revoluted is the current growth sustainable. It's tough to buy in at all time high, but also FOMOing right now. Also, what exchanges do you use as a Canadian? Um, okay. It's, it depends on your time horizon. Um, one thing I've learned is it's impossible to time the market. 
you might buy right now and it might crash. You might buy right now and it might go up another couple thousand dollars. So, um, yeah, uh, what I have learned is it's not about, and this is a, this is a Tony Robbins thing that I heard, but I think it was somebody he interviewed. Anyways, it's not timing the market, but it's time in the market. If, that means it's not trying to find the highs and lows and sell and buy at the right time. It's it's keeping your money in there and just ignoring the noise. You know, set set up how much money you are able to put away that is money you're okay with losing. And then just set a schedule for yourself. Every week I'm gonna put in 20 bucks. Every month I'm gonna put in 50 or 100 bucks. Whatever your a dollar amount is, just do that regardless of shit that's happening in the background, people arguing about scaling, people freaking out because Mike Hearn rage quit, people freaking out because uh, an exchange got hacked. Ignore it. If nothing fundamentally changes with Bitcoin itself or whatever your, whatever your investment is, just put that money aside. Every, every time and just ignore the noise and in the long term you will come up on come out on top versus trying to get in your head about it. it investing should be boring and i know bitcoin is exciting as shit um but the method in which you invest should be boring um it shouldn't be Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, it dropped. I'm going to jump in. Oh, wait, no, it's dropping more. Maybe I should jump back up. No, it should be boring. You should, you should set rules for yourself, um, whatever those rules may be, and then just stick to them regardless. Jim Rohn, is that who it was? Awesome. Good to know. Uh, Frogville Studios, 2020 is the having and price doubles from wherever it's at. Don't leave it on an exchange, print out a paper wallet, make a thumb, dr thumb drive for cold storage, just hold on. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're going to see a lot before uh, 2020. It's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, definitely agree. Tw what did 2938, JD, where are you seeing this price? 2938. Um... <laughs> crypto omar and btc interview this needs to happen yeah absolutely i'd love to um wow okay uh somebody asked what i did for a living scroll up a little bit cynic lod uh i i was talking about i, <laughs> I teach little kids how to break dance and then i posted a really stupid video of me dancing uh as a joke for a wedding so if it peek up there if somebody wants to repaste it actually here you go cynic lod this is for you in case you missed it this is a video of me dancing like an idiot okay um let's see if i don't have it okay guillermo Rolone? I'm not sure how to say your last name sorry uh if i don't have any interest in making fast money can i Buy just one Bitcoin and hope that in 10 years it will be a good investment. Sorry for my bad English. Hi from Argentina. Hey from Argentina. That's so cool. I love it. I love hearing about people that are so far away that are that are checking this out. That's that's really awesome. Um, Guillermo, uh, yeah. No, if if you if you're not trying to make fast money, I think that's the best tactic. Um, like I said don't put money in that you can't afford to lose um but if you're going to be sitting on it for 10 years i mean short of a catastrophic event i think you'd have a fantastic return like okay just just to give you an idea if you had one bitcoin um or sorry rather if what was the analogy? I heard this the other day. Okay, if every millionaire just in the United States, this is just millionaires, if every millionaire in the United States wanted to have one Bitcoin, there would not be enough. So in the future, I very much think it's going to end up being the case where where people look at somebody with one Bitcoin and that is an unbelievable thing. I mean, of course, there will be the ultra rich that have like 100, 200, 
thousands of, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, which is insane to think, but one, one Bitcoin years from now could be a, a large amount of money. Um, it already is today. It's crazy, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Kenny tomorrow will be in the news again that Bitcoin reached all time high. The media will pump Bitcoin again. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. It's going to be all over CNBC. They've been pumping it like crazy. Um, yeah, it's nuts. Let's see if I, okay. M Goldie, if I send Bitcoins to someone uh, in a third world country who has an iPhone, how do they convert their Bitcoin into the local currency? Um, it very much depends where they are and what resources are available to them. So number one uh, that is available pretty much everywhere is a site called localbitcoins.com. And that's essentially just meeting up with somebody and exchanging your Bitcoin for cash. Um, but short of that, I can't really tell you, you'd have to, you'd have to check out the country itself. And I would just type in the name of your country and Bitcoin and see what pops up. There may be exchanges. There may be, Oh, you can also go to coin ATM radar.com. I don't know if <laughs> I don't think a lot of third world countries have Bitcoin ATMs, but you never know. Um, yeah, so you would probably have to go with a local solution uh, that allows you to do that. All right, what else is there? What is happening? Flat Earth revelations. Who? What? Oh, man. We have a flat earther in the room. Jesus. <laughs> Winklevoss twins will rule the world quite possibly bit guy Bry. Um, <laughs> okay, flat earther. He it see he wants to ask a question. You can yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm unsure if the flat earth thing is legit or not. If you're just being uh, <laughs> being ironic or what? Okay. Um, what am I looking at now? Yeah, please. Yes, it's me, boss lady. I agree. Please be careful when exchanging crypto in person. Don't go alone. Meet in a public place with security. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, JD, no problem. Coin ATM Red Air is a solid site and they, they have all the information on there too. So if you go to an ATM, it'll give you if it's one way or two way, what the percentage fee is, all that stuff. It's great. Um, <laughs> Richie Rich, Winklevoss twins will use their Bitcoin to buy back Facebook from Zuckerberg. <laughs> oh, awesome. Uh, Will you join the Telegram channel Crypto Aquarium? Uh, I haven't used Telegram yet, but maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, question, the pick in the background, is one a wallet, crypto art or something? Yes, it's crypto art. Um, they are not wallets. They, I mean, you can get them to be wallets. I just wanted the art. Uh, but yeah, I love those things. They're so cool. Uh, cryptoart.com, I believe, uh, ooh, pricey, but super, super awesome art. Um, yeah, they can be, it can be a wallet. So you can get them printed and, and have, uh, have Bitcoin associated with the picture itself. Yes, absolutely. Uh, really cool though. Um, what else? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and wrap this up pretty quick here. I don't know how long I've been going for. Uh, I don't have the I don't have the actual channel open to see that. Um, yes, uh, JD, they accept Bitcoin. Um, I'm originally from Canada, living life in the Cayman Islands. To get money in and out, the only way I found when living in a small country is to get a bank account abroad. Unfortunately, yeah, that's too bad. Um, my advice is pure BTC or pure gold. Thank you, Guillermo. I appreciate that. That's great. Um, what books, videos, or what books and videos do you recommend for learning more about Bitcoin and crypto? That's from For Reals. <laughs> 
I like your name. Um, okay, books and videos. Uh, right now, I'm listening to the audio book of Blockchain Revolution by Don Tapscott. Uh, it's pretty cool, actually. Um, some of the use cases that they talk about are, are pretty interesting. I don't know how many of them will actually come to fruition, but I think it's an awesome idea. Uh, I really like, oh, hold on, I'll grab the book. Yeah, just a second. This one, this one I love. The Age of Cryptocurrency. Uh, this one is Paul Paul Vigna, Vigna. I don't I don't know how to say his last name. And Michael J. Casey. Anyways, this book is awesome. Um, it's just it's really cool. It goes through some of the use cases uh, and some of the um, potential use cases for Bitcoin. How how it differs from regular currency. Why it's such an incredible thing. And how how cryptocurrency could change the face of the, of the world um, by opening things up to people that didn't have access to it before. So that one I highly uh, recommend. Um, I listen to, uh, what's it called? There's a few things I listen to, hold on a second. Um, I like listening to podcasts. So what have I got here? Of course, I listen to uh, let's talk. Let's talk. Bitcoin is my favorite because uh, Andreas is on it all the time. Um, but uh, it also has tell us the name Adam Adam B Levine and Stephanie Murphy. Uh, those are the other hosts. Anyways, I love listening to their stuff. I, there's a new one that just came out talking about consensus. I like Andreas because um, he's usually pretty level-headed about uh, cryptocurrency in general. Like he's not he's not super maximalist. He sees he sees the value in things like Ethereum, but he's also pretty really realistic about it and says like, you know, there's right now it's just a bunch of shitcoin ICOs being built on top of it. But the platform itself is useful. So, um, yeah, I like I like checking that out. Uh, I. I, I get tired of, of getting information off Twitter. It's, it's, it's exhausting because everybody bickers all the time. And I just, oh, I still get on Twitter, but I work myself up and I just, I used to reply to, to angry people that I disagreed with. Now I just don't even bother. This, this, I, it's not like they're going to agree with me when I repl reply. Trace Mayer. Yes. Uh, Big guy, Bry. Um, yeah, that is one of my other favorites. He doesn't put out as much, um, what's it called? The Bitcoin knowledge podcast. Uh, that one is a good one. I really like that. Um, and yes, he did just do an interview on crush the street, which is awesome. Um, as far as other resources, anything Andreas, I love, uh, his newest book. Um, what's it called? Maybe somebody in, in there can can uh, tell me what it's called. Anyways, Andreas Antonopoulos's latest book, wow, that's hard to say, um, is great. It's just, honestly, it's a collection of his talks, just refined, uh, and, and they've taken out parts where he stumbled over his words or, or maybe worded something strange. Um, yeah, so those are kind of my resources. Somebody said, yeah, it's me, boss lady, said Reddit is full of trolls and she can't do it anymore. I agree. Um, I pop on there and I scroll through, I ignore all the sensationalist crap and I just look for interesting articles or videos that people have posted. That's, that's kind of what I do on Reddit now. And I use it to, to share my videos sometimes too. Uh, yes, big guy, big guy, Bry, internet of money and his other book is mastering Bitcoin. That one is a little thick when it gets into, uh, some of the, the coding behind it, um, which is a little bit beyond me. Uh, I, I just barely kind of taken a peek at Python. I, I'm not a coder at all, but, um, but yeah, if, if you know how to code or you're kind of getting into it, at least it gives you a, a, a good overview. Uh, Stephanie Murphy does the audio for Andres's book. Uh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, I love it. Cool. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I knew I knew that she did. Uh, that's one of her jobs too. She she does audiobooks, like she reads for audiobooks. That's really cool. Uh, check out Chris Dunn. I feel like I know that name, but I haven't. 
I don't I don't know if I've seen any of his stuff before. Uh, you the man says I'm 100% new and I don't know how to create a wallet or what is a safe place to create. Um, you the man, are you talking about uh, like a, a wallet on your phone or are you talking about a paper wallet? You actually you probably don't know if you're 100% new. Um, okay, so the the wallet that I use on my phone that I love the most uh, is I really like. Uh, and I might get shit for this because some people are mad at BitPay right now, but I really like Copay. Copay is is awesome. Uh, I just saw somebody recommend Bread Wallet. I like that one too. The only problem I have with Bread Wallet is it it it's slow to load, and I realize that has to do with greater security, so on and so forth. But I but yeah, I really like I really like Copay. Um, somebody said Jack's Wallet. I'm gonna be honest. I like I did a video on Jack's Wallet. I really like the concept. I really like that you can switch between cryptocurrencies within the wallet itself, but I've had nothing but problems with, with Jack's wallet. Just it, I find it has incorrect balances. Sometimes it takes a long time to update. Um, I'll send something to it and it won't even show up, uh, for quite some time and i and i'm not talking like it won't say it's confirmed but like the transaction itself won't even show up as pending or anything like that so I, i've had some i've never lost money with jack's wallet but i've also had major delays with it so i'm i don't know and then when i contact support they assure me that that it should show up immediately um but that's not always the case. Uh, for desktop, uh, when it comes to multiple cryptocurrency wallets, I really like Exodus, uh, E-X-O-D-U-S. Uh, they're awesome. They only have a select number of cryptocurrencies available to be used on their platform, but it's just so sleek and, and it works so well. Uh, also, it's a small team, so they have trouble keeping up and adding currencies. So uh, hopefully they get shown enough love uh it, it, everybody here actually you know what everybody here if if you dabble in other cryptocurrencies go check out exodus exodus.io um awesome wallet i really love them i think because they're a small team they can only do so much but if you like their shit then then give them a little donation they're awesome guys uh super nice i've chatted with them too um yeah Oh, Richie Rich. Exodus has a phone number. I actually spoke to them. That's cool. I mean, yeah, great. Uh, mycelium wallet. Yes, mycelium wallet is my go-to wallet when I'm using um, uh, a hardware wallet. So mycelium, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. Anyways, mycelium up top there in the middle. That's what it looks like. Anyways, that's my go-to wallet when I'm using something like a Trezor or a Ledger um, because I can see my balances on my phone, but if I lose my phone, I'm not at risk of somebody spending all my money. Uh, if you don't know what a hardware wallet is, um, on my keychain here, I've got a Trezor. I just got this a few weeks ago. I still have to do a video on it. I love it. It's, it's awesome. Um, it's simple, easy to use. I love it. I left these out because I figured I was going to talk about them at some point. Uh, I use my, this is my second favorite. Actually, you know what? I'd say Ledger and this are tied. Ledger Nano S. Uh, looks like a USB stick, um, but actually it's got a little screen here, and then it's got two buttons on the top for like yes and no to approve and, and decline transactions. Uh, and you can just plug that into your phone with a tiny little cord. Um, yeah, so those are my two favorite wallets. Uh, the other one that I that I also like, um, and I like again using it a lot more on my phone than on my desktop, is the uh, the Keep Key. That's the other one that I've been playing around with. Uh, it's it's got a nice shiny screen. It's kind of dirty, but um, yeah, when it lights up, it's all nice. Um, yeah, and it's just another same thing. You can there's a button on top to approve transactions, things like that. I think it's great. Um, all of these are are really great. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend checking them out. Some other company. Um, I have, <laughs> I have a lot of shit. People, since I it's weird since I started the channel. Some people just like sending free shit to try. 
Um, and I try not to be too hard on companies because I know that, that it takes a while to test things for bugs and everything. I got this thing called the cool wallet. I still have to do a video on this. It's so it's, it's, it's a card. Um, but then you can like, there's a button on it has like an e ink thing. Um, I haven't, you pair it with an app on your phone and I think through Bluetooth it connects and then you can approve, you can approve, but yeah, it's just like, it's a card and you can approve, um, transactions using the card. And then there's like a little pad, um, that you place it on to charge it. So yeah, I had, I hadn't heard of these guys. Uh, I'm going to try it out. And, and see how it goes. Um, but yeah, hopefully the cool wallet is cool. I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyways, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is probably getting a little long. I'm gonna, okay, um, a couple more. Couple more questions. Uh, <laughs> ben has to use all those wallets. That's how much crypto he has. You know what? Honestly, it's... it's um, if you're holding any amount that you're uncomfortable with, then I kind of like to spread things out so that if there's an issue with something, I don't have all of my eggs in one basket. Like, let's say, let's say Ledger tomorrow, all of a sudden somebody finds a flaw and they're able to just sweep everybody's wallets, which I definitely do not think is going to happen. But if I've taken only a portion of my crypto and put it on my nano s and then i've got a portion on my treasure and then a portion on uh my keep key and then i've got some in other places then i don't lose all of my money so you've got to mitigate your risk and you got to keep it maybe i have some paper wallets and and i keep some that way so it's 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 a good idea not to put all of your eggs in one basket then you won't be i mean you'll still be disappointed if you lose money but at the same time then you're 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 not losing everything all at once because I don't know if I could handle that. That would kill me. Starting over. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways. Um. Yes. Amen. Offline. <laughs> ben has so much crypto that his hardware wallets get physically heavy. <laughs> That's awesome. Um. Do okay, Alex Thiessen. Do I mine or will I mine in the future? Probably not. Um, mining Bitcoin is straight up not profitable unless you have a warehouse full of miners and you're sitting in China with free power. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna make money like having an ant miner at home, or, or at least it's gonna take you years and years to make back the cost of buying the machine. So yeah, I don't touch it. Um, what some people are doing is they'll mine, they'll mine whatever altcoin they want and they'll hope that it goes up in value or they'll just direct, like if it's easy to mine, then they'll just sell it and, and get more Bitcoin. Um, and I think that's, that's probably a good idea. Um, some of the top 10 coins are now getting too difficult to mine even so it's it's not even really worth your time you'd have to do some research on the subject i'm probably not going to mine um yeah let's see uh oh zz sniped investment question when do you stop to hodl and sell to get capital i don't sell I shouldn't say that. I don't always, I sell on very select occasions. Okay. So, um, working, doing some work for bit national or in the past when I've done some work for, uh, Bitcoin brains or for, um, for Bitcoin solutions, I will get paid in Bitcoin for those jobs. Um, and when I do, I try to put that money away and save it. Um, which is fantastic because then like a year later, you're like, oh, wow, I got paid double or triple or so. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's what I try to do. I try not to spend. But a couple examples where I have. Um, so I got married last year in July uh, in Bali. And then I went backpacking through Southeast Asia. And I used a variety of methods to to 
spend Bitcoin, mostly for video examples, but near the end of my trip, I just straight up didn't have any money. So I had to sell some Bitcoin. Um, when, oh, when it was like, God, it was like seven hundred dollars, six or seven hundred dollars at that point, and I sold, I sold some Bitcoin. It kills me a little bit, but I like I had to. Um, it was that or come home. So and and at the time also because I had bought some low, uh, I was in, I was in the black anyways. So I, you can't always look at oh I bought this and it would have been this today. You can't always look at it that way. Um, so yeah, I, I sold some to fund the end of my trip. And when I got back, we were a little shy in cash. Also, <laughs> uh, I haven't really said this on my channel, but the <laughs> 24 hours after I got back from a five month backpacking trip, when I was super, super broke, um, I'm talking other than the Bitcoin that I'm holding because I don't look at that as money that I have. I look at that as like, potentially my retirement. Um, <laughs> so 24 hours after I got home from Southeast Asia, we found out we're having a kid. <laughs> so we were jet lagged as shit. We were tired and broke and, and just like figuring out when we're going to get back to work and everything. And then all of a sudden it was like, Oh, also baby, baby soon. And, and she was like, five weeks pregnant at that point, um, five or six weeks. So anyways, long story short, I'm having a daughter in two months. Uh, actually we're super stoked about it. Um, it was, it was a little surprising and panic inducing after like 24 hours after getting home from a trip like that. Um, but we sat down and we're like, you know what? Like she's a nurse. Um, my job as it is, is, is pretty good. Like I feel okay. And, and we've had friends in worse situations that have had kids and they're just fine. Um, so I think we're gonna, I, I'm, I'm now really, really excited. So yeah, I've got a daughter on the way in two months. Um, I'm excited about it. <laughs> Congratulations, a new baby Bitcoin, right? Um, yeah, buy her Bitcoin. You know what? I'm going to put away. Bitcoin for her and I'm just going to leave it till she's 18. Um, and then we'll, we'll, uh, see what happens then. So yeah, that's that, that was also when I sold some Bitcoin and the other occasion was just recently I got paid from bit national for doing some work from them. And then I went to England and I basically took that Bitcoin. I put it on my, my Wirex card, uh, with like a Bitcoin visa that converted to British pounds. And then I didn't have to pay to convert my currency other than like whatever the transaction fee was, uh, the one time Bitcoin transaction fee, all the, all the regular purchases were free. So yeah. Um, <laughs> when she's 18 it's to, uh, tuition is a car and a house. <laughs> it's tuition, a car and a house. Yeah. Okay. I get what you're saying. Awesome. She will be a teenage millionaire. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Let's cross our fingers. Um, call perpetual assets to move your IRA into a checkbook LLC account. I don't know enough about what that is. <laughs> um, okay. Anyways, guys, I think I've got to wrap this up. I it, Sun's going down. I would like to go for a little bit of a walk. It's nice out tonight. Uh, and my very pregnant wife uh, would probably like to spend some time with me tonight. I've been holed up in my room. Uh, so, guys, thank you so much. Holy crap. I didn't expect like 120 people to sit around listening to me jabber on for however long i don't even know how long i've been here but um yeah i can't thank you guys enough uh for your support here and for your support on my channel in general uh if you want to hit me up on twitter you can follow me at btc benny um so follow me there uh whenever i'm doing a live stream i'll try and throw that up there uh i think i'm gonna try and do this on a regular basis it's just so much easier for me uh, to answer questions this way. I can't, I, yeah, I, I'm having trouble keeping up with all the questions and comments on my videos. I'll try to, I'll, I'll still obviously try to answer what I can, but like 
I'll, I'll check my phone and it's just blown up. So, um, and it's, uh, again, that's not a complaint. That's a good problem to have. So thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, yeah. Feel free to hit like if you liked it. If you didn't, dislike the shit out of it. Great. Um, and uh, yeah, love you guys. Uh, I will see you soon. And uh, if you get the chance, share that Gladia coin video because um, the more people we can stop from losing their money uh, in, in shitty scams like that, the better. So thank you guys very much. Uh, and thank you for all the questions. If I didn't get to yours, I am so sorry. Uh, everything was, was going all over the place. I just, yeah. Um, thank you to all the people I know here, uh, digital gold, uh, it's me boss lady. Uh, thanks to ZZ sniped for your questions, uh, to Ken Richie rich. I see, uh, you know, uh, there's a ton of people in here that have been contributing. Um, and, uh, where is it? I'm looking for, da, 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 da. and of course, Kenny, uh, yeah. Thanks for helping me mod around here. Uh, that's, that's great. Um, anyways, thank you guys. Have a great night. Um, and I will, I think I'm going to do this again probably next week. Uh, so yeah, have a good night. See you guys.